Bizarre Ride uh, to, uh, to the Far Side is, in my opinion, one of the greatest albums of, of the 90s. All right. uh, so how do you look back on this era and the times when you recorded it? Wow, looking back, man, it's really funny because we're older now. And um, when we made it, we didn't realize, well, at least I didn't realize, how magical it actually was and how funny it actually was because we were just being ourselves, you know what I mean? So to listen to it, you know, now, I just really, it's just a really a funny record. And um, I just really enjoy how many people that it inspired, you know what I mean? And it's, it's really bigger than, it's really bigger than we ever thought it would be, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it's not, a, I mean, you know, it's a hard world right now for everybody. I mean, some people harder than others, but what it's like he was saying, just to add to what you said, we contributed something to give you joy, you know, because we had so much joy making it. Without even realizing without it. Without just, just living it, yeah. which is the essence of hip hop, it's living it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, it's, that's, I can't even explain it. Next to my life and my kids and my wife, it's right there. You know what I mean? Okay. And uh, what? Unless she pissed me off. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, what was it like doing the open mic sessions at the Good Life Cafe in LA in the 90s? And how did it help you develop your style? I didn't really go to the Good Life. Um, I, just us. I didn't really go to the Good Life as much. That was uh, mainly Fat Lip, Buck, Fat Lip and Buckwheat and K Natural. Yeah. And I was there, I would always bring the beats. No, that was big time, you know, the man. Good Life, man, the Good Life just bought everybody that was almost like, not really anti-gangster rap, but like we doing more than gangster rap. We spitters over here. So it started as like a little community thing and then clicks formed from that and battles happened. You know what I mean? Groups formed from that. Legends. Yeah. Jurassic Freestyle, Five, Freestyle Fellowship, Fellowship A Team, all kind of shit. Everything. Yeah, I went to Kool Aid. Yeah. Everybody came from there, man. So Look, I was in high school with Peace yeah. from Freestyle yeah. Fellowship. Shout out to Peace. Him and Buckweed from the Wascals. Yeah, we yeah. used to go up there, and then Peace, he he started, the, his group started forming, and our group was forming. I had the Wascals, and then. We wasn't even called Farside yet. It was called Two for Two back two then. Two for Two. Yeah. But we used to, anywhere we could get an opportunity to just express the hip hop that we do, it was, it, you didn't even have to ask us twice. Because we nothing nice. <laughs> yeah. And you were pioneers of, uh, of the laid back, positive rap in the, in the West Coast. And it was hard coming, coming out with such an image in the 90s when the West Coast scene was dominated by more, by more violent, aggressive lyrics. Mm. Oh, because the model's be yourself. One thing you can do in, in, in L.A. is be yourself. You just got to fully be who you are. Yeah, with you no fear. You can't pose. It's no pose. It's like, it's like you can't be like, like I'm a skater, and then you can't kickflip. Right. You feel me? So if you on that positive, fun, hype shit, you can do that. Right. See, some people's throwing blood. Some people throwing up cuz. I was throwing up L7. You can call me Square all you want. Square I'm a musician. That's what I do. I love hip hop. I love music. That's I right. love performing. And there's a lot of kids that came up when we came up, and that's how they felt. And thank God, after all these years, kids is listening to our shit. You know what I mean? And how did you first connect with Jay Dilla? And what are your favorite memories from the times you spent with him in an, both in, a, in an hour studio? Um, we met Jay Dillon when we were making our record uh, for um, Lab Cab in California. Like um, when we were in when we were in Los Angeles making the first half of it, which was the majority of like maybe us making beats and things like that on our own. We we sat down and we listened to a bunch of the stuff and we were just like you know it still needs a little something. So we reached out to Q-Tip and we were like yo, why don't you um, do some beats for us and help us out with this next album? And he was like first he was like yeah cool let's do that. So we flew out to New York, and I think we were out there for like six months or whatever. And um, when we hooked up with Q-Tip, he was busy working on Mob Deep's record, so he was like, yo, you know, like, I'm not going to let you down, but I won't be able to, to um, you know, work on it. But I got this cat. His name is JD. And so we was like, oh, okay, JD. But first we didn't believe him. We thought he was just pulling our leg, you know what I mean? Like this was like his like alter, you know, his little alter ego, you alter know what I mean? Ego. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, 
one day, you know, we went over to Q-Tip's house and he had this cassette tape and we were just sitting listening to it. And then we heard drop and we heard running uh, beat and we were just like sold. So we were like, fuck, we can't wait to, like, where is this JD motherfucker? You know what I mean? Because we was like, damn, we haven't seen him yet. And then lo and behold, one day we, we met up again and uh, just out on the street, I think it was out by Houston and something, I don't remember, down in uh, Soho. And here comes JD. He had his uh, his Kango hat on. He was a real dapper little kid, you know what I mean? And um, he was a cool motherfucker, man. He was a real cool dude. Yeah, I got to meet him um, after, because I came in when uh, he was in LA. And Mike Ross, the label owner, called me. He's like, hey, man, he wanted to get my opinion because, you know, I did Bizarre Ride with these cats. So, so I was like, all right, I'll come check it out, you know. When I got there, the beat for running was on the multi-track, on the tape, m running already. And he was the coolest guy. Running was running on <laughs> tape, literally. And and he just gave me my respect. I didn't really, I, did, I had no idea who I was talking to. But I knew he was real cool, he was humble. He wasn't like, I'm this. You know, he was just like, hey, man, I, I love your shit, man. It's dope. He was just glad to be a part of the next chapter of the far side, which and the fact that I got to meet him and rest in peace. He passed. You know, that's a blessing. I feel like I feel like we were the first group to really break him in. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like because he was he was new. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's a breakthrough. After, right? And it's like when when running hit, that shit spoke for itself. You know what I mean? It just cut through real nice, and that was like a that was like a big record. And then drop happened with uh, you know with the uh, Beastie Boy sample and the videos going backwards, and that was just like woo. So it like kind of like made it official for Jay Dilla, you know, with yeah. JD at the time. Yeah. Wound up being Jay Dilla, but you know. Yeah. You guys are the ones who put him in the phone booth. Then he came out and he was Jay Dilla. <laughs> he was JD. Like, like the Superman. Yeah. That was yeah. the phone booth uh, yeah. theory. Yeah, he, he really, uh, he really made, oh, then after that, oh my God, like from Busta Rhymes to De La Soul, like he just stayed, the, the Uma stuff, you know. Man, he, he, did some, he did some amazing stuff. And one good thing that I, I remember, because um, you asked me, you know, what, he, what was one of the good things. And one of the good things was we were, I think we were mixing running. And he brought this tape and he was like, yo, man, I got this group. I was like, oh, you got a group? He's like, yeah, you know, he's like, um, yeah, I got this, I got a bunch of songs on here I want y'all to check out. And I was like, all right, cool. I was like, what's the name of your group? He said, Slum Village. And I was like, all right, so I took the, I took the tape and I went home and I put that shit on, oh my God, it was just amazing. It's like it it changed the rhythm and the cadence of hip hop. It's some really boss ass shit, you know what I mean? So, it was, man, it, it's, man, it's really raw. You can really tell, like, just the way that they rapped over the music too, the little yeah. offbeat shit, oh, they was in the zone. And with the drums and the snare going. Uh, oh my God, uh, exactly, exactly. And he played drums, you know that? He yeah. plays drums, man. Oh, he I didn't played, know that. Yeah, he played JD played drums. He did a lot of stuff musically. And uh Illa J sings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's awesome. Yeah, they were they were a musical family. Yeah, family. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and, and my next question is about drop because okay. it's definitely one of the most creative and fun videos in hip hop. Okay. Uh, and I heard, uh, like you mentioned, that you shot the video walking backwards, and you even hired a linguist to help you rhyme yes. backwards. Yes. So, what was the hardest part in doing that? Well, <laughs> the hardest part was working with the linguist because it's like we were learning a new language, you know. And not only were we learning a new language, but we were learning it like double speed. Because like we, there were certain things that I think they wanted to do like kind of slow motion wise. So in order to do that, you have to, you have to kind of speed it up, and then take it back down. So when we got to the when we got to the shoot, it was triple speed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we were like just trying to do what the fuck we needed to do. And I feel like if we had one more day, it would have been seamless. Like you would not have known, lip sync why. Yeah. But I'm just saying. I knew, I knew like we were like we studied on the plane, we studied on the tour bus, we studied everywhere because it was that fucking important, you know, and then walking backwards and things like that. And we were just like fascinated by 
creative minds. We're all like that. Like, like we're all like, although you didn't see these guys, they were there in the way that we think. We're like one organism. Mm -hmm. We all think the same, you know what I mean? And so like those are our creative juices collectively. Because we always, we always, we were always kind of to the left. We always thought to the left. What if this? What if that? What if this? You know. So we're doing the backwards thing. We sat with, um, we sat with Spike, uh, Spike Jones, and we were like, well, what if um, we had a dog walking the dog? Or what if we had the, you know, you know, uh, bouncing balls bouncing up the stairs? Or what if we unpainted a painting? And so we just applied all those things, just tried it all, uh -huh. and that's what we got with Drop. Or the water, just to go with the up water going us. up, yeah. all of that, man. Yeah. It was just, it was great. Clothes come flying yeah. on, you know. It's epic. Yeah, thank you, brother. And and your debut album was produced entirely by Jay Swift, but on the second album, the first one was Jay the, Swift yeah. and L.A.J. Mm -hmm. He did other fish. Yeah, yeah, uh, but on and the Pass Me By remix and Park, uh -huh. he was right there with us. We all grew up in the we all grew up in the same place. I had you know, I had done almost the whole album, and then we got to a point where. I was doing things. I was starting to branch out, trying to get my production deal, and they were going in a different direction as a group. So I knew I wasn't going to do that last song. So I talked, Mike Ross was like, well, what are we going to do? I said, I got you. His name is LAJ. He's my secret weapon. He's the only dude that could see me as far as my eyes could see, G. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. But when I heard it, when he did that song, it was like, I, no, no, I, look, man, I, I was, I went to sleep like a baby because I was worried about the album. I still had, was in charge of the production of the album. I just handed it off the baton to him because I already knew what time it was with him. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, it was, just, it was beautiful, but yeah. You can ask me ask about the album. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, what is your favorite song uh, that you produce uh, for Farside? My favorite one no, that I favorite. Song. What's your that? Favorite? Your favorite song? My that favorite? Probably other fish. Probably. No. Probably. What? No, 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 my favorite? Argue with his own opinion. Because of the way it came together. Yeah, it, came together. it just no, came together. So hot. it was like otherworldly almost the way it came together. Because I showed up to the studio, didn't know what beat we were gonna come up with or whatever and just started playing records and then found a loop and in 10 minutes the beat was done completely done and then he went and then i went out and started shooting pool and he went in the vocal booth i was out there beating everybody's ass in some pool and then i went back in there and he laid all the vocals he had his shirt off he was in there sweating like he was he was gonna make that shit happen that's the thing about trey and then it just and we just kept adding new elements and just, you know, massaging it like it's like a, you know, a, a, like a clay art or something and just kept rubbing it and it just, I watched it. I watched it just turn into something that wouldn't have happened if it was just me by myself. That's why when it came time to credit it, I'd said it's have it say produced by LAJ and some kid Trey. Cause I was just more in awe of the process, and it w if it was just me trying to call all the shots and all that, it wouldn't have come out the way it did. And Amen. Yeah, even Romai came in and had his little yeah. two cent. Jay showed up to the studio like, man, this sounds great. And oh, I did. He had a couple of little insights and things. Yo, and I look, the insight I had was, wow, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, I was like, yo, and I was in the, after we went to the studio, I got in the car with Mike, and then I listened to the one before the final, mm -hmm. and Mike was like, you were right. I was like, come on, man. I don't hang with suckers. I run with winners, man. You want to win, you got to run with winners, man. And so the whole album was done like teamwork with everyone yeah. collectively working yeah. and, and coming up with ideas. I feel like the album even, the recording of the album started like two years before yeah. the group even, you know, became right. far side. It was like a, it really was like a, a collective kind of thing where everyone kind of got on the same accord creatively and everyone was aiming for similar things, and, but they brought different, unique things to the table. Right. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it felt. Yeah. And, and to that note, because that's exactly, I'm a, I produced most of the album, but the songs, 
we were doing them in my apartment and then our manager had an apartment that he turned into a studio so naturally we're learning i love learning i love making beats i was learning dancing from them they were dancers they were he was rapping forever. Too, yeah. Sisters group yeah. for Jazzy like We were all helping each other like that. So when it came down to the album, I had to give the group co-production. Because if you're in the room and you have anything to say that matters, that's part of the co-production of the record. And I got plenty of props. I don't need to worry about, you know, I got to put my name all over it because I would be lying because it wasn't just me. It was all of us, the team. There is no I in team. There's I in win, though. No, no, no. And how long did it take you to come up with all those uh, your mama jokes for your single, yeah, mama? That's all we do. Oh, that, that's we all do we that. do. Yeah. That's just every day. Every day. Man, we ran a dat for like three hours. Digital audio tape. Yes, that's just the old school. recorded everything. We I just sat saw there. his mama before we came over here for this interview. <laughs> I was just with his mom. Yeah. Look, for, for like no, no music, nothing, in a quiet room, and one person says a joke, and it's corny because we're starting out. Then another one. And then it's so corny, we laugh. And then another, next thing you know, like 30, 40 minutes in, I mean, we had so many jokes to choose. We had more jokes than we put on the record. We just yeah, had to pick the ones. I, we need to find those tapes, man. You probably got them. Okay. He got more mama jokes, though. <laughs> All right. And uh, I have a question about the album that you released with Fat Lip uh, last year. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, love album. album. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you satisfied with people's reactions to it and the way it spread? And is there a chance that uh, that you will work together with Fat Lip as a duo in the future? You know, um, we're focused on Bizarre Ride. Yeah, right Fat now, in the, in for, the yeah, Fatlip is in Bizarre he's Ride. In yeah, he's yeah, in this so, group. Yeah. Um, as far as the Love album is concerned, man, I was uh, shoot, I think that album took three years to make, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't have took that long, but it did. It was there's 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 songs on there I really really like. Um, shout I hope shout out Japan, shout out to Suzu. You know, hopefully they'll bring, be able to bring it out here. We have a a, a video that we did uh, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, mm -hmm. and. Hopefully that video will get dropped so everybody can hear it too, you know, or see it. Mm -hmm. But I think he, I think uh, Suzu wants to redo the video, so um, we'll have two versions of that. But I did like the Love Album song. There's a lot. I mean, Love Album. Uh, it's it's, a great it's really thank you. It's so funny. Like it's so obscure the things that people take to. So that was good too. And you know, me and Fatler, we've done a, a lot of records together already. We worked with um, Sam Spiegel, which is um, Spike Jones's brother, and he's his his group is called NASA. So we've done like 13 songs with NASA, you know, uh, with Sam and his group and stuff like that. So me and Fatlip has been doing a lot of stuff, but like right now we want Fatlip to you know to let it flow. Yeah. <laughs> we want him to let it flow right now because he you know he's he's a he's kind of a perfectionist and sometimes you know he, he overthinks you know, music, but we're like, yo, you really don't. Let it out, just let it out, man. You know what I mean? Just trust what you're gonna put out is dope. And he does it, and it's always like something really special. Thanks. Yeah, he's great, you know? Since you first came came out, the music industry has changed tremendously. Uh, what are the things that you like uh, about those changes, and what are the things that you feel made your life way harder? I mean, it's just it's it didn't change. It's just a new way that they consume media and that they consume the material. So the game never changed. Hip hop niggas still hip hop niggas. Gangster niggas are gangster niggas. New school niggas are new school niggas. What happened was. MP3s came to existence. Small ass file for good music. And you can send it, rip it from a CD. Yeah, so the average person in next door became their own bootlegger. Because it was even cool when it was regular bootleggers, because you still have people that went to the stores, the mom and pops, and maybe would go to the bootlegger, but they, you always wanted the cover. You always wanted to see the thank yous, read the thank yous. You always wanted to flip all the pages in the, right, right. You wanted to touch it. You wanted to, to look at it, smell the ink, all everything. You want to be the first to rip the plastic off. So 
back to the question, it never really changed. It evolved. So hip hop is a branch, right? Right? Like Marley Morrow said, he planted the seed and the main bark grew straight and all these branches and, and leaves and flowers and shit grew off of it. So it's, it's not changing me. I like, I like what everybody's doing because it's like they're making a following for themselves. They're grinding themselves. They're making it where they are the label, and the label becomes just a quick distributor for them after they pop and get there. So it's making us work harder, everybody across the board. It's making us work harder and making us stay self-contained. So it's not changing. It's evolving. It. I think it's dope. I think it's dope because now you can just you're the label. You know, hey, you 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 decide whether you're touring or not, depending on the work you put in. Look, I. I, for one, this is just me, this is Jay Swift talking, I love it. Yeah, I love because it. it's been about time that the bar got raised. I'm trying to pole vault over that shit. I'm not trying to go over this shit. This is bullshit. I'm trying to go over that. Look how little I am. I'm the littlest nigga. I'm trying to hop over that and not even touch it like, oh! And be in the sandbox. Hard dive over that. Boom, waiting you for know. the points to come up. Yeah. 10, 9, 9, 10. Stupid. <laughs> what do you think about the West Coast scene now? And do you feel like there are people that are continuing your legacy right now? West Coast there's scene. A lot of, there's a lot of dope cats. You got to remember this with the West Coast. like. Don't get it twisted. Gangsta rap dude supported backpacks. Backpacks supported gangsta rap. You at any given time at a backpack event, West Coast, you'll see a dub C up in there throwing up West Side listening yeah, to that shit. That shit. Fucking with that hip hop shit. And you'll see those backpack niggas at some gangsta shit. Ay, on, throwing it up at World on Wheel skating. So with us, West Coast, we just like family. It's always been family oriented. That's why it is gangster shit. As it's long family. As, you do you, like as long you said, as you do you, then you get respect. True to what stuff. you do, then you just get the respect. This is it's nothing. Like my boys up in Oakland say it's not a nothing. Y'all a dick, y'all right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? What What are we talking about? About the West Coast scene right now. Oh, the West Coast scene now. Oh, man. The one thing about hip hop in general right now, all across the country yeah. and around the world, is that for some weird reason, after the 2000s ended, people got serious. Like, <laughs> man, they were like, man, we bringing lyricism back, yeah. flowing like really being dope, crazy beats back. I mean, it, it's like it came back. Like all the heads that have been there since the beginning or whatever that were like disgruntled about the state of hip hop, they don't really have nothing to complain about no more. Yep. If not, if you're really listening, because it's like real serious right now. There's a lot of real talent out there. So on the West Coast, there's a lot of people out there like, uh, what are the kids? Um, Pac Div, Pac -Div Kend Kendrick Overdose, Overdose. Yeah, of course. Kendrick yeah, and Ab Soul yeah, and all of them yeah, Our Future. Yeah, the, I mean, those right. Our Future Blue, cats can write. My nigga Blue, my son, my son Blue. <laughs> <laughs> now his he name is the same name as mine, John. He's dope. He's he's ill. I mean, yeah. of course, you know. I mean, there's still the the legends like you got Mad Lib. Ten funk volume. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, it's and, and and like you said, it's growing at the same time. Like. Pro era and like Rock, Joey Badass and them, that's them the dudes that's the and dudes yeah. and dudes coming from the south that's yeah, on yeah. that real hip hop right now. Right, what's like my Rock, name? What's that? Um, Nicholas name? Nicholas F. Oh, B. Nicholas F. Yeah. 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 There you go. Dope. Yeah. From Virginia, he's dope. Super dope. Right, we good? I have a question uh, okay. to you about your solo work. Uh, your debut album was titled Liberation. Yeah. Uh, what was the inspiration behind this title and, and the project? Was the fact that you finally became a solo artist and had the full creative freedom? Freedom, or was it more like spiritual liberation? Okay. First off, I had I had no intentions on leaving the group called The Far Side at all. I was just doing music that I that I you know I would always do. I always had like extra. I was always producing other things, but. It was like a spiritual kind of awakening kind of situation. So that's where liberation came through. And a lot of things that I was talking about during that time, you know, it's like, it's, it was personal to me, you know what I mean? So it's like, you don't want to put that on, like, I don't want to 
that didn't want to represent everybody else. It, it like because maybe they didn't believe in the same things that I believed in or things that I was just going through some changes. You know what I mean? And those are the things that I did with uh, liberation. And I'm glad I did it. I'm glad it all happened. I had a live band and the whole deal. But once again, I had no intention on leaving um, the group at all. It was just an extension. It was like 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 Method Man and the Wu Tang. You know what I mean? So so that was that. Currently. I'm doing this project, or I finished this project with uh, DJ Newmark that's yeah. being released September 9th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be out. And, you know, we got um, Bizarre Ride. Bizarre Ride, we have a, a little sampler. Sampler record called Titty. Titty. So get that because everybody needs a titty in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last question What would you say is your biggest musical accomplishment thus far? Oh, the bu bu biggest musical Titty. Buy it. Titty. <laughs> buy it. T-I-T-T-Y. -T -T What's the biggest musical accomplishment? Yeah. For me, it was like, okay, we sampled all the time. But for me personally, it was just becoming a musical orchestrator. Because I wanted to, like, we would go places and we have certain samples and we run into other crews that have the same sample. And I'm like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to just pull from the source like everybody else did, like all the greats, like, you know, um, New Birth and, and shit, man, Earth, Wind and & Fire and things like that. It's like, I'm, I'm gonna have to challenge myself too. So when I started orchestrating, I felt, um, I felt stronger. You know what I mean? I felt more confident, you know what I mean? And um, now I'm doing projects with uh, Moonbeam Kelly Project, this girl in uh, Portland, Oregon, a vocalist. I've always worked with vocalists and stuff like that, you know? So I don't know, it just made me a better producer. And for you? Me? The best uh, accomplishment in music? Yeah, your biggest musical accomplishment. Music accomplishment um, being taught by my first, the life God gave me, but being taught by my father, who's a musician. And he played all kind of instruments. I watched him sing. He played salsa music, Cuban music. But if it was individually, it would just be to be able to make music and make music with my friends. Because we all was teenagers. We grew up making music. And I watched us all grow. I watched us, our little, you know, our little kids and stuff. And they love hip hop. And, and after all this time, they feeling us. Because I always say, if you do it right, it's timeless. That's it. So, you know, I don't, hey, I'm 20 twice plus two. I can tell you what mine is. Not finishing this nigga's album and passing it to him. Cause I get sick of this motherfucker after <laughs> yeah. too long. So yeah. I was like, yes, I'm passing yeah. this shit to Jay. Let me tell y'all, all right? Y'all got to get ready, all right? Because it's The Adventures of Negro Knievel. That's my that's my solo album, The Adventures of Negro Knievel. And this nigga look. is a Negro. And, and I'll explain this to this. And look, it's not me. It's not Jay Swift. It's my alter Negro. <laughs> alter Negro. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for the interview. Right, no, I really appreciate it. Sure, sure. All right, bro. thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. <laughs>